Solana's TVL has reached over $6.3 billion for the first time in over 1,000 days. We can see this here at DeFiLlama.com. But here's the impressive thing. Sanctum has contributed over 20% of the TVL in just over seven months. Sanctum's TVL blew up from $35 million in March 2024 to right now $1.27 billion. It's now at basically all-time highs. That's a massive increase of over 3,500% in TVL over seven months. But first, what is Sanctum? If you haven't watched my other videos, they'll be linked above. However, Sanctum is a platform that facilitates the launch and trading of liquid staking tokens, LSTs. And this is done on the Solana blockchain. It supports trading with zero slippage and allows users to deposit LSTs to earn yields and trading fees and use LSTs in various DeFi dApps. They also have something called Sanctum Wonderland. Now, Sanctum did the shortest point system they did not farm the users like other dApps, like MarginFi, with their point system. Now, this is very important because if we have a look at the TVL of MarginFi, it once had the highest TVL on Solana, even more than Camino. It was almost at a billion dollars, and now it's not even at 400 million. Still a great dApp, but you can't farm people for points forever. Sanctum Season 1 was launched April 29th, 2024. The point system and Wonderland closed on June 5th, 2024. Their point system only lasted 37 days. The TVL before Wonderland launched was $321 million, and the TVL when Wonderland ended was just over $1 billion. The difference between a project that has product market fit and one that does not is that usually with many projects, once the farming season ends and the airdrop is launched, the TVL just drops. Now, I personally believe that Parcel actually does have product market fit, but for whatever reason, this is what happened to Parcel. Their TVL dropped significantly after season one airdrop was launched. But Sanctum, even after doing its token generation event and the first round of airdrops to the community, the TVL has held steady and has been on the rise. In fact, the TVL has grown organically without any points or reward system. And in my opinion, this has massive product market fit and the TVL will only increase with time. Now, the reasons for Sanctum's increasing TVL, total market cap of Solana liquid staking tokens is 4.91 billion dollars or thereabouts and the current total market cap of Sol is around 80 billion dollars that's 6.1 percent of lsts on solana the lsts improve the liquidity in DeFi. they can be used in liquidity pools to farm yield they can be used in lending protocols such as camino and usdc or pyusd can be borrowed against the lsts and before the origin of sanctum there were predominantly only three lsts jito Sol, which i definitely love m Sol, which is the og kind of lst and B Soul, which is smaller, and you're welcome to use it, but I don't personally like it or dislike it, it's kind of neutral. These three LSTs had the majority of the market share, but there were major difficulties in creating these LSTs. Sanctum's tech enabled the path to infinite LSTs, and LSTs on Solana are so much easier than on Ethereum. In fact, as far as I'm aware, they are the easiest network by far. However, it's important to note that Sanctum were actually building on the LST front since 2021. By the way, anyone can actually create their own LST on Solana, which of course improves the liquidity in the market. And as the general manager of Validate.com, we're also looking at getting our own LST. After Sanctum's breakthrough tech, many great dApps in the ecosystem have had the opportunity to launch their own LST, such as JupeSoul. JupeSoul launched April 17th. Since then, it's become the third most popular LST on Solana in terms of market share, and it has 12.1% of the total LST market cap. Sanctum also has its own LST, INF or Infinite, which has a market share of 3.65%. Now there's another very important aspect, which is bridging centralized exchanges and the massive liquidity on the actual blockchain itself. So using Sanctum's technology, Binance, which is essentially the world leading exchange with the highest volume, they were able to launch their own LST. What you can see right now on the screen, by the way, is from Dune, and this gives us all the statistics if you're a bit of a data nerd. But back to Binance. So BN Sol. This helps all of the Solana lying in Binance to actually earn yield. And potentially, this can be used as collateral in their own dApp and maybe other dApps in the future. Now, if you're new to Solana and new to staking, here's one sentence you must pay attention to. If you hold Solana, it must be staked. If you do not stake it, then you're losing out to inflation. And if you're losing out to inflation, then your upside is reduced. Just by staking your Solana, you're earning around about 7% APY and your percentage yield. There are a lot of people that have Binance as an account. They've got a decent amount of soul sitting there, but it doesn't earn any yield. 
Now they can convert their soul to be in soul, and they're going to get that extra yield. And that will be incorporated into different DeFi opportunities as well. Be in Soul's market share has grown to 4.45% ever since launching. Same with Bybit. They've launched their BB Soul using Sanctum's tech. Their market share has grown to 2.34%. Now Sanctum announced their season two of Wonderland, then maybe the holders of Binance Soul and Bybit Soul, maybe they could be rewarded as well as those that hold INF and Dupe Soul soon, maybe validator.com so unsure what our name will be. But either way, this will drive massive liquidity into the Solana ecosystem. And Solana has been the best performing cryptocurrency asset in the top 10. Now, when users hear that they get extra yield for swapping their soul to LSTs, this will drive more liquidity from the centralized exchanges to swap their crypto to soul and then to LSTs and on-chain as well. These users then start exploring DeFi opportunities like using Camino Finance and Jupiter and Meteor, and they are more likely to actually learn the ecosystem and stay in the ecosystem. But the biggest question right now is when season two? The team mentioned that season two would be announced in quarter three, which is July, August, and September. But so far it hasn't, while the TVL has kept growing organically. We're already in quarter four, and there has been no word from the Sanctum team on season two, just to make that super, super clear. So the question you must ask yourself, what if season two is already in play? They announced season two will come later this year. It will be different. We want to deliver an even more mind-blowing experience than your first time in Wonderland. What if the team decides to reward their loyal, organic users instead of announcing a second point system where users farm them? Maybe a community that is formed by actually rewarding the loyal users is a better option instead. There's a good chance that Sanctum is doing this because of the FUD they faced after season one and the airdrop. Essentially, if you missed it, 50% of the community airdrop went to earnestness, essentially content creators, people that are helping in Discord, people that were doing tweets, basically people that actually supported Sanctum. The other 50% of the airdrop went to users who put in liquidity to farm the points. Now myself and my team put in a huge amount of effort into Sanctum and we did get an actual earnestness allocation. Having said that, I have said it was too much. 50-50 didn't really work out to be probably the most beneficial thing. So maybe this is what the team said will be different and a mind-blowing experience since no one would see this coming. Old school, use the dApp, you like the dApp, you keep using the dApp, you put in more liquidity and at the end, here you are, thank you for your loyalty. I think there's a good chance for this to play out this way, especially since they're already having their TVL grow. Now, what about cloud? The cloud token has performed really well and has even outperformed Solana. Very few airdrops are above their launch price at token generation event. Cloud, Jupe, and Camino are all examples of it. Cloud's market cap has fallen a little bit down to around $60 million and its fully diluted valuation as we can see is $333 million. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that a decent amount of cloud has just been given as Jupiter active staking rewards to Jupiter stakers, and a lot of that has been sold, hence the reason potentially why the price has decreased. If you have a look at Dex Screener, you can see launch at this price, decent amount of love for it, and then basically the LFG vault was oversubscribed, which was good. It came right on down, and then, you know, this is all due to the FUD up it came. And then Binance, buy a bit, boom. Still a little bit more of a boom, all the way up to like 45 cents. And now it's come down a little bit. Misari has done an in-depth analysis. You can read this yourself. You can go and sign up for Misari Pro and have a read of this. But based on revenue generation, they arrived at a fully diluted valuation of $842 million in quarter two, 2026 as a base case. However, I think the market will top before then likely quarter four, 2025. Either way, base case, 842 million. That's a 2.257X from the current valuation, thereabouts, which puts us at around 84 cents. Bull case, just over 3.5 billion. That's a 9.5X, basically putting the price at $3.56. Now, there are other things that you have to be aware of. We can have a look at the Sanctum governance token in the docs here. This introduces cloud and goes through everything. And here are the tokenomics. Basically though, 10% was used to seed liquidity in the LFG launch pool. There was an airdrop of 10%, so 100 million cloud. And FP Lee, they were working on making cloud the greatest launch yet and making it fair 
and aligned and liquid. I think they did a very good job, to be perfectly honest. Now just keep in mind that the earnestness allocation will be fully vested January 11th, 2025. People can claim it beforehand, and if they do, they will lose some of the actual allocation. So essentially, until after January 11th, maybe like end of January, we could see a little bit of price difficulty, just potentially. But of course, if they ship new things, such as their debit card and other things like that, then that could, of course, generate significant interest, which would offset that kind of price dump expectation. Now, I'm very bullish on Sanctum's tech, what it does for Solana in terms of DeFi and bridging the gap from centralized exchanges to decentralized exchanges. However, as you all know, and if you don't, I am the general manager of Validator.com. If you like my content, you can support by staking your precious soul with Validator.com. You can stake it right from your favorite wallet. I use Soulflare wallet, and this is how you stake your soul from your wallet. You can check out the link below. Remember, the important thing is if you don't stake your soul, you lose to inflation. The current inflation of Solana is just under 5%. However, if you stake with Validator.com, you'll be earning approximately 7% and you also get MEV rewards as well. Essentially, you're beating inflation. Also, as I mentioned, it's on my list to create our own validator LST as well. If you've watched everything, now here is my actionable. Go and get amongst Sanctum. Help out the Sanctum community, give them good feedback, use the different LSTs, use them in DeFi. Just do whatever you can to help Sanctum. I think you will likely be rewarded. And if you're not rewarded, you're still beating inflation, which is beautiful. You're learning something and you're using DeFi and you're using the blockchain the way it was meant to be used, in my opinion. Happy staking. All links are below.